mean, I think it's pretty spicy now. It's chilly. <laughs> <laughs> it's chilly. <laughs> As you walk down here and look at the limestone, you'll see some fossils in here. Tell me if you see a fossil. As a geologist in the state of Florida, sometimes it's challenging to see the geology in the state of Florida because we are somewhat topographically challenged. So some of the best places for me as a geologist are on these rivers where the river does the work and cuts into the geological strata. Within those rocks is a story millions of years in the making. The Upper Apalachicola River contains some of Florida's most visible geology. On day one of River Trek 2016, we'll explore some rocky places. These kayakers will travel 107 miles down the length of the river. However, they'll find some of their most memorable adventures off the water. The, the drill that we usually do is we stop here at the mouth of this little creek, which is called Means Creek, and we have a Means right here. There he is. <laughs> That's Harley Means, son of the legendary Bruce Means. Some of my earliest memories are slogging through some of these steephead ravines looking for salamanders and snakes. What's the common name? Uh, the Southern Dusky Salamander. And <laughs> helping my yeah. father inventory some of these unique animals and plants that are only found in the Apalachicola Bluffs and Ravines area. One of the really, really neat things about it is that not only is it neat for my father's niche in science, ecologically. Banded water snake. But it's, it's really neat from a geological standpoint. This limestone is early Miocene. It's somewhere between 20 and 23 million years old. So what does that mean? What was going on here where we're standing 20 to 23 million years ago, if this is limestone? Yes, we're under a shallow sea, and it was warm, tropical sea. This limestone was accumulating as uh, all kinds of organisms lived in the nearshore marine environment, died, accumulated. Walking down Means Creek, we see more remnants of this ancient sea. These are the remains, the ribs are sticking out of the actual Chattahoochee formation there, of sea cows, or dugongs. Not many places in Florida can you walk along a creek that is incised down into bedrock where you get these nice sort of canyon walls and you can walk along and you can see these beautiful exposures of, of geology and here you've got the Chattahoochee formation exposed. Water is low enough. The first day of river trek ends at the Allen Bluff sandbar. Allen Bluff is known as the tallest natural exposure of geology in the state of Florida. Depending on the stage of the river, that can be as many as 100 to 120 feet of exposure there, and there are multiple geologic strata that are exposed as well. It's just one of the few places you can go in the state to look at millions of years worth of geology in exposure and not have to look at a core or a set of cuttings. Right at water level is a distinctive sort of whitish, sandy deposit, but what really jumps out once you start to look at it is that it happens to be uh, almost a shell hash. So there are you know, literally millions of shells embedded in this sand unit, and oftentimes you get a nice whitish color because the shells are leaching and they're bleached white. Not everybody can get excited about a fossil shell, <laughs> but I believe everybody can get excited about fossil sharks, particularly beautiful, big fossil shark teeth. And here are two great examples from Allen Bluff. And, um, you know, I can't guarantee that you'll ever find one at Allen Bluff, but they are there, and this is proof of it right here. This is a fossil mako shark, but this is the real prize. This is what a lot of people are after. This is the megtooth shark, Carcharodon megalodon. If you do a modern comparison looking at what we believe is a relative of this beast, which is the great white shark, if you do a comparison of its tooth length to its body length, and you do the same for this, it turns out this creature could have been in excess of 50 feet long. You know, why do I keep going back to Allen Bluff? 
Yeah, I've been there over a hundred times in my lifetime and counting, and I'm going to continue to go back. And it's because every time I go there, I see something different. I see something unique. I see something that gives me now a, a bigger and better picture of the history of the area. And it's, uh, it's great. All I'm going to do is get out and look. Every river trek gives us a chance to see something new about the river, whether it's from the living present or the distant past. That's what keeps luring me back. You never run out of things to see, in or out of the kayak. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.